when YouTubers keep showing you who they are and you keep acting like you're surprised. Now, this is based off a uh, article that I saw on Yahoo News regarding a couple of YouTube or a few YouTube influencers um, deciding to party and to rave. No, what they call it to rage, right? During the COVID-19 pandemic that's sweeping across the United States, especially around the Sun Belt. It feels like anywhere along the Sun Belt has got an, you know, they, they just spiked in insane levels over the last, what, last few weeks or so. Um, they kind of got off scot-free in the beginning. It felt like COVID in the United States. It felt as if like every, the protests, the riots, nothing seemed to really spike the numbers. But then overnight, it feels like as if like, you know, suddenly um, COVID has taken control over in North America in certain parts. And, you know, the numbers are getting astronomical, hospitals are overflowing. Um, people are getting asymptomatic. People are contaminating family members. I saw some tragic story the other day of some girl, a granddaughter infected her granddad who then passed away. Um, um, while she's in a coma it's just a really distressing story isn't it so you'd think so obviously the climate over there is different than the uk i think the uk we've sort of kind of i don't want to say got a handle on it but it's not as bad as it was prior and the people that are going out are going out fully in the knowledge that you know you're going out and you're putting your own life at risk in general but most people are abiding by the rules so but you feel like this temperature in the united states especially with how political it's gotten with covid it's a bit different right so you would imagine if you were going to decide if you decided to go out You'd imagine if you did go out, you'd do it covertly. You'd want to do it, you know, under the, the cloak and dagger of a flipping, you know, uh, an Uber X somewhere. You'd want someone to transport you in and out of that place. You'd want all the phones to be contagated. You'd really want to take every precaution necessary so that you wouldn't come across like a selfish, you know, son of a gun, right? Especially considering all the other people that have basically flouted the rules and been pillared online. You just wouldn't want that hate. It's unnecessary, right? Especially during COVID, why is friends at home? Because it feels like if you get, can it feels like when you get cancelled or people basically rag on you on social nowadays, especially whilst everyone's at, it just feels more potent because everyone's on their phone and on social media. It's not the time to get people to not like you. But obviously, these YouTubers, influencers, um, don't necessarily do that. And they always beat to the sound of their own drum. But what the funny thing about this story is that a bunch of these YouTubers decided to head out to, you know, these Airbnb parties in the Hollywood Hills and rave it up with all their young and attractive friends from TikTok. And they all decided to post it up on social. That's the really odd thing. Or put it in their vlogs and stuff. And then I guess the paparazzi came along, the Hollywood, was it Hollywood Fix or Hollywood, whatever, that white and pink font one. They came along these interviews and kind of blew the spot but now everyone's sort of like you know all the fans online are complaining oh my god i can't believe they went out during a global pandemic they're so selfish la, 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 la. and i'm just looking at it from the outside in just you know as a casual observer thinking i've seen a lot of videos of these you know because usually these drama channels they can be a bit you know um they can be a bit over the top, right? They can dram dramatize just the tiniest of things. But for the most part, the more sensible drama channels that I follow, they always tend to highlight or feature the same recurring cast members, right? It's, there's about five to 10 people who constantly feature on these drama channels. And mostly it's through, mostly it's all their fault, right? It's not even the fault of the drama channel. It's specifically the fault of the influencer. Like they've done something wrong. They failed to learn from their prior lessons. They're being messy. They're talking about people's business. They're just, you know, whatever it may be, right? And they constantly make these mistakes and the, their audience is constantly surprised. And that's what I just don't get. I really don't understand why some of these fans or these YouTube influencers are holding out hope that these people that they follow knowingly, right? They follow them regularly too. So they're aware of their personality. Because I, I imagine with a vlog, no matter how much you edit it, if you're vlogging consistently, there's only so much of your personality you can hide or kind of keep to yourself, right? As we've seen with all these different stories of different influences, right? Like whatever's hidden will come to light for sure. So it's not like you don't know who you're following, but somehow whenever someone like a Tana is a good example, when she gets into some sort of issue, her fans are always surprised and shocked. I'm disappointed. I'm let down. It's like, why are you let down? She keeps telling you she's a garbage human. Not a bad thing, but you know, what she call her, t her channel? Trash or something, right? She keeps telling telling you that she's a trash human being but you guys keep still holding out hope especially her fans that she's that suddenly the penny's going to drop and she's going to be sensible and a nice person and she's not going to get involved in drama and she's going to be you know responsible with her fans it's like no she's not going to be that person she's consistently showing you she's a trash human being just accept her for what it is and keep it moving 
I don't understand that. It's really bizarre. And this this YouTube article sort of like um, describes the issue. So it says influencers apologize for their selfish and stupid behavior amid pandemic. Be smarter than I was. So it says the following. It says the number of influential YouTubers and TikTokers attended a birthday party for Larry, whoever that person is, at the Hype House in Los Angeles on July 21st. Videos and photos revealed that the event was packed in spite of social distancing guidelines. The guests included James Charles, Tana Mungo, Nikita Dragon, Charlie D'Amelio, and dozens of others. According to Insider, the party reached its capacity and people crowded outside to be let in. Just imagine, right? These people who have essentially carved an entire personality, an entire business. They've put their family members in college. They've paid off their parents' debt. They've bought houses and cars. Imagine these people trying to maneuver in the world that requires you to have some kind of level of decorum, some kind of level of man, not manners, some kind of level of... Um, you know, understanding how to read a room, right? It's a, it's a weird time we're living in, right? We're living in a time where people, you know, jobs are going all over the, you know, people's losing their jobs, uh, people, businesses are fellow and taking people are having to move back home with their, with their parents. So it goes without saying that probably this isn't the time to be flouting your wealth or to be flouting your um, level of, I don't know, comfort, to maybe flouting the fact that you're able to do, you know, it's just not the time, right? You, you don't want to be putting it into people's faces. I remember when, when, when people couldn't get a hold of um, tests and people, you know, the rich and famous were going out and, you know, getting people, testing them at home and stuff. It just came across a bit, you know, um, it just didn't sit right with the public, right? Having to look at those kind of things. So imagine these kind of kids seeing everything that's going on and deciding, you know what, we're going to party and we're going to record everything. That's the thing that just messes me up with that one. Like, if you're going to go do it, just take everyone's phones. But because they've entire because their entire personality is crafted online and they have no other life apart from what they post on social media, it seems like they effectively live their lives so that they have things to post on the internet which is weird but hey it's a new world we live in they just cannot be separated from posting stuff on social they just cannot do it they just can't do it and it's really really bizarre that's the thing that really makes me think that they just don't really care that much and if they don't that's okay but as fans you should be able to understand they don't care and you know act accordingly do you still want to be their fans or somebody that clearly doesn't care about the well-being of anybody else apart from themselves and their friends? Yes or no? If yes, then keep it moving. Um, so this is a tweet. This is a, sorry, a tweet from a, a page called Deaf Doodles. It says, Tana Mongo, uh, Mongu, have you pronounced her name? Monguel, Monguel, Tana Eseja and other influencers attended TikToker Larry's um, birthday party yesterday. Lan Tana has been going out to different parties every night. <laughs> she recently promised a series of videos addressing all the allegations of racism are made against her. What are your thoughts? So this girl Tana, she's been accused of racism. She's been accused of being a garbage human being. Before addressing that allegation, she goes out and parties every single night during a global pandemic. Posts numerous videos of her getting smashed and high with her friends. You know, and most of her fans are what, like under 18 or something, right? So that's already questionable. <laughs> and people are still holding out hope that she's going to be a sensible person. Like, come on, man. But the funny thing is, I'm thinking about it. Whoever this Larry or Larry is, right? This must be a great time to be a, to throw birthday parties, right? Even if you're really unpopular or people, you don't have that many friends. If you put on a party during a pandemic, during lockdown, and no one's got anywhere to go, a lot of people are going to turn up. Especially if all your friends happen to be under the age of 25 and they live on their phones. They're going to show up. They're going to rage. They're going to get on it. It's the video of her. What's she doing? Smoking and, being, and trying to be... Why are you like fully sweating? course dancing in it video of her and the stories i guess and another about to continue it says fans were unhappy at example these influencers set for millions of followers Un now you're unhappy come on man let's be for real it continues says um as a quote it says I, I love larai to death what the f was nikita and him thinking um california cases just passed new york and that's literally such an issue and there's a huge party with no one wearing a mask one fan wrote on twitter oh by the way Let's just get that out of the way, right? It doesn't matter if you go to a party wearing a mask. It's That's not the issue. The issue is going to a party full stop. COVID, from what we've learned so far, spreads quicker or, you know, has spreads more easily when you're in a close, confined areas with no real ventilation, right? It's impossible to social distance in a party. If you're having parties, that means there's no need to social distance. It is what it is. That's why clubs and nightclubs and bars and stuff, or nightclubs in general and concert halls and stadiums will be the last thing to open unless there's a vaccine because they can't risk having, you know, people in proximity to each other because there's going to be no way to keep them separate. 
So if you're going to a party, you're just going because you want to go, not because you think it's safe. Um, it's just, it, I just find it funny. Like, maybe people don't expect that from Nikita Dragon because she essentially doesn't really, you know, you see, feels like, I feel like Nikita Dragon sort of accepted her role as just being, you know, whatever. She makes mistakes, she just carries on, doesn't say sorry. Does you no, know, there's no point. But the Tana Mongu thing is just weird, man. She's always just been whoever she is, waiting for her to be somebody else or something different. We've got a picture here of who. James Charles and Charlie D'Amelio and continues here it says if your favourite influencers are at huge parties during a pandemic and are dumb enough to post on social they're the bad influencers unfollow them says a YouTuber Tyler O'Cleaver on Twitter I think as well thinking back on it thinking on it now the issue isn't just going to a party and not put you could, going to a party and not posting it isn't the best thing either I don't think that says a lot for your moral compass that you would go somewhere in secret and not show it to your fans because you want to it doesn't say much right and then you're preaching to your fans not to go outside and to wear a mask it's just a bit hypocritical and um, the issue is just in general with the fans i don't put the issue with the influence because i generally think this class of influencers have been pretty consistent in their actions some of them are young and they've still got some time to grow but for the most part they're all just been exactly how they have been since they've burst onto a scene so it's up to you the fan to decide if that's the person i want to follow you're just gonna have to take the good or the bad you can't pretend to be surprised it just isn't fair it really isn't um, he continues it says following the backlash James Charles shared a day in a live video on July 28th that was the funniest one James Charles videos are super lows he makes a vlog about his day <laughs> oh, I guess about his escapades during the day showing him getting prepared for the party getting his outfit on talking with his friends basically rolling up to the party and then he puts like a screen up showing the following right there's a screen on there saying hi sisters I decided to cut the, the party footage from the video even though I've been wearing a mask in public and I've tested negative multiple times going to a party during pandemic or selfish and stupid decision but he did it anyway right um people's safety and keeping covid contained is far more important than celebrating a friend's birthday and unsafe partying is not something i want to promote to my audience but you obviously uploaded the video of you getting prepared for it cool um since i recognize with my platform comes responsibility and i encourage you guys to be smarter than i was wear your mask and continue to social distance love you and it's just that's the thing as well that's weird optics right James Charles is just about, I don't know, he's f maybe fully, if not on the way to regaining his position in the sort of, you know, makeup industry, you know, uh, sector area, right? He sort of recovered and bounced back from the whole J James uh, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson controversy and all tatty thing. And people are back on his side again. He's up with his up subscriber count's gone crazy. He's doing great little TikTok collabs and stuff. You would think this would be the time to avoid any unnecessary, you know, backlash, especially with all the news coming out of this other kid popping up at the woodwork allegation, right? You just want to keep your head under the uh, under the radar and just do your work. You know, continue putting out great content, feeding your fans, putting out great products, and just keeping it moving. But instead, you still kind of find a way to get yourself involved in the mess. Do you know what I mean? And who knows if this him attending this party was not a kind of a catalyst to put more attention back on him so that that kid could come back out again with the allegations. Who knows? It's just, you know what I mean? You're just doing yourself a disservice. And again, if you're a James Charles fan, you just have to be conscious enough that he keeps making these sort of mistakes. He keeps fumbling. He keeps fumbling the ball and making, you know, errors and doing missteps. <coughs> now not one's telling him to be perfect but there are things that you can avoid and this was easily avoidable isn't it it continues it says um tana mongo faced further criticism for attending the same party and two additional parties uh oh, she's a fucking nutcase she says in a now deleted video that has since been uploaded by other accounts mongo appeared alongside youtuber erica costell who i don't know and this is the video here right tana mongo <laughs> listen to her listen we don't fucking care white girl synchronization <laughs> we don't fucking care they are so blazed right now they're smashed as a last and again you know you're there is her prerogative they don't care and they don't give a fuck and they you know they're more willing they want to um they're willing to you know dip into their own hedonistic needs uh despite what's going on in the nation fair play let them do so um it is what it is, isn't it? But I think the fans decide, isn't it? Whether or not these guys have a career or not. I don't think it's up to anybody else to decide to cancel them and shit. It's up to their fans. If their fans co-sign this sort of action and think it's just them being young, dumb and, you know, and having some fun, then cool. But 
it's just boring people outraging about this it really is it's just what well, what's the point of outraging this is who she is and it? it shouldn't be something to even get your your knickers and twist about really um and i guess she could apologize again um what three days later or whatever whenever she recovered from a hangover and she said here yeah, partying going out to any social gathering during global pandemic or such as careless and responsible on my behalf i fully hold myself accountable how many of these things has she done like <laughs> I feel like I can't for this. I will be staying inside. Actions like that don't deserve a platform, and I want to be fully apologize and be better than this. I'm sorry. While Erica and I were referring to a past drama in our video, the topic no longer matters. I need to be a better example in person. You don't. Just keep being yourself. Be being the trash bag that you are. People will keep still following you. I guess people kind of. That's what I kind of thinking as well. Maybe these YouTubers and maybe Tanner's a good example of it, right? Because they, because there's a lot of people that kind of don't really understand why you know people watch the Kardashians or whatever, right? But I think YouTubers are a good example as to why. I think because there's so many of them, right? There's so many prominent ones who you have essentially you can choose what kind of person you want to follow, right? Whether it's a family channel or whether it's a a longer lesson or a school that goes around it, or I think it's a picture as well. So maybe with YouTubers, in the same way with the Kardashians, YouTubers, uh, Kardashians sort of represent YouTube in a way because they each got their own sort of personality, all the sisters, right? So you're effectively kind of following a Kardashian via the Kardashian shows individually, right? You sort of kind of get to know the person through their show and then through that you get to kind of follow them on their own accounts and you're kind of doing the same thing. So maybe there's a fact, there's this part of YouTube that just wants to have the sort of car crash trash person and follow that person because I, I try to watch a bit of her content Tana and you know she's not that compelling not that interesting really um, a bit dim not in terms of it just IQ but just in general right she doesn't really have the widest range of interest or whatever that you can really get speaking to her about maybe outside of what you see on YouTube you might be the fact but you know not that impressive of a person but she might be captivated in that she does essentially live that life the YouTuber lifestyle that some people think is what it's about right the idea of like going around getting fucked up living in la young and beautiful friends attending coachella that is kind of the quintessential youtuber um motif and maybe she's the kind of closest person to it everyone else tends to grow out of it pretty quickly it feels like but she's the one that may maybe apart from nikita dragon but she's the one that seems to really enjoy being a youtuber being in hollywood doing her own thing um or living in la sorry doing her own thing she really seems to enjoy it and so maybe some fans out there want to see that and just follow and kind of live there and kind of live vicariously through her maybe that's part of it but i think the ones that are surprised and getting annoyed oh my god i can't believe she did that and i be better it's like she's not gonna be better she's a mesh she's a dirt bag she says it with her chest up and you fans love it you just gonna have to kind of accept it and kind of you know go with the um go along with it and if not find yourself another youtuber but expecting her to change is a bit unfair in my opinion